Hello everyone, welcome to our first tutorial for Grasshopper in Rhino and um, for industrial design. And also uh, architecture students can gain some knowledge from this lecture for sure. Okay, so let's first turn on Rhino. And then if you want to turn on the Grasshopper, just type in Grasshopper and then you'll get it. So what is Grasshopper exactly? So let's start with a simple example. So if I want to draw a column in Rhino, as you guys all know, if we want to do it manually, it's pretty straightforward. We draw a circle first, and then we extrude this circle, right? And if we want to make it bigger or taller, we can do this, right? If we want to scale it in a certain direction, we can drag it and play with it. Right? This is very straightforward, but also very tedious. If you only, let's say, have 50 of those, it's actually a lot of work to just manually copy and paste it. Although there are certain ways to do it um, in an easier manner, but overall you have to set up all the controls, commands every time. But in Grasshopper, if, if I want to draw a column, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come over to curve and start with a circle here. So you can see that this is the interface for Grasshopper. It's just a kind of like a pop-up inside of Rhino environment. And if I come over to curve and uh, find circle, and uh, I will get a circle. If I like highlight it, it will turn to green as default color. And if you want to draw a circle, of course, there are plan, like which plan it is. Um, it is on and also the radius. The plan also includes the center of this um, circle. So right now the default is X, Y plan, right? So, and uh, let's say the radius, the, right now the default is one. And let's say I want it to be 20, 33, whatever. And then I plug this number slider in, and then I will get a circle. And I don't have to tediously search, uh, select this curve and scale it. No, I don't have to anymore. I just literally change the size of it by moving the slider. Okay, the next thing I would do is I will just extrude this curve. Uh, I can just ser search extrusion. So I will plug this part. So this is input, right? This, this You can simply understand this as a block of codes. Uh, inside, there's there are some code uh, maybe written in C sharp, and then there is input, there is output, right? It's basically this block will do something for you. And if you ask it to do something, you have to give it an instruction or you have to give it an input, and then it will generate something for you, which is the output, straightforward. It will generate a circle here, and then I will just plug this in which is extrude. If you want to extrude something, you know, in Rhino, you have to have some curve or shape to be able to be extrude, right? And, and also you want to have a directionality for the extrusion. Uh, so here's a direction. So I want to extrude it to Z direction. So I will just put a Z here and default, it has a number ten, a one here. I will do like, let's say 17 and then I can extrude this however I want it. So people will ask, why are you doing this? Why are we doing this in parametric design? Well, the answer is so obvious. That is easy, simple, and we can quickly adapt it uh, to serve whatever needs we have in terms of modeling. If we generate this model in a set of algorithm, the efficiency is super high and we can change a lot of variables at whenever we want. So our design can be more flexible or universal in a lot of different time. And sometimes this technology has already become a sort of art. A lot of artwork are inspired by uh, parametric design tools. And uh, here is an example that I will show you. So if I want to have a, just a very interesting column, let's say, I will move this up in the ear again. This command is move or component is called move. Uh, pretty straightforward. If you want to move something, you have to tell it what are you going to move. So which is base geometry and also directionality, which is 
a vector, right? I think all of us know what a vector is. And here the vector is 0, 0, 10, which is means a vector is something like this. Start from this point and go up 10 units. Okay, so move something from the base and move up 10 units, right? This is exactly what this vector means. And if I put unit Z here, uh, it's default as one. And I would, let's say it's 55 and hit enter and I'll get it in, right? So the next thing I would do is I would divide the curve. So divide curve is just a um, very simple component that will divide this curve equally uh, into even length segments. And uh, so this is a curve to divide straightforward. And then this is a count, like how many segments you wanted to divide it into. And also this is kinks. This is some concept we will introduce later. This curve doesn't have any kinks, so it doesn't really work and matters here. And then for the output, the points that we are talking about, right? Of course, there are um, those 10 points that we just got and the tangents. I mean, the tangents are at each point. So they are vectors too. Like at this point, what tangent it is. So, and at this point, the tangent will look something like this. And at this point, the tangent will look like something like this. So those are the tangents. And also the parameters as list, right? Parameter values at division points. Well, this is an interesting value. Uh, let's take a look. The length of this circle is just two pi r. The r radius is 17. And so two pi r is 34 times i, which is 3.14159265. And we will get a number like 106.8. So what this means is that those parameters are the length of the certain segments from the starting points to that specific point, which is saying that the first point, let's say, let's see which point is the first one. I pull up this, it's right here, list item. So list item is calling a specific data from the list. So let's take a look. Uh, so I think this is called curly parentheses. Uh, correct me if I was wrong. And uh, inside means there's a list. And inside of the list, there are 10 items. This is the index, index zero, index one, index two, index three. In most of computer language, uh, zero is the first number. So the index zero means the first number or first item in the list. Okay, so there are 10 of them and the last one is index nine. And uh, if we select this point here, okay, we automatically default select the first point and then that's this one. And if we select the like second one, Second point, it's this one, all right? So 0 0.0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, so on and so forth. And then if we divide this, okay, we, we just bake this. We bake this. Bake this means like right now, nothing you can select in right now because they are all generated in Grasshopper. So it only displays here. But if you bake it, right, you you hit the center key uh, and then hit this bake, like this egg logo. And then you will get this point in the real world, kind of in like Rhino environment. And then I will also bake this circle, okay? So, and then I will split this, trim the rest of it. So I will get this circle here. And then let's measure it by using this thing called length. So I will select this curve, right? I will select this curve by right click it, set one curve, and then bring it in. And I'll get a number here. 21.362831, which is this number here. That means like this, uh, parameters are just simple reflection of the length between the starting point to this specific point, right? And if we want to make it zero to one in a lot of time, in a lot of time, we don't care about the length, but we rather care 
about a certain point, for example, we want 0 0.5 to be the center of the curve, then we will do this thing called reparameterize. So if we do that, it will immediately squeeze from 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 to 0 0.9, right? So this point is no longer, we are no longer simply calculating the length between the starting point and this specific point, but rather they are just thinking that this whole thing is just the length is just one and uh, we can get all the coordinates very easily by understanding the percentage or the way the number divided. Okay, so why are we explaining those things? Why? What, what, what's the point? Okay, well, we well we will not include these parameters in our uh, tutorial today, but this is a very, very important concept. I want you to have an early touch on this. So, and then I would delete it. Okay, so the next thing I would do uh, for the sake of this example, I will actually divide this curve on the top too. So I will, this is the one we moved before and we, I will divide it. And then the next thing I will do, I will connect those points together one to one, okay? So a curve, I come to curve and select line and first line and second line, uh, first point and first point and second point. And then we will get this, right? Straightforward. We simply connect those points together and generate some lines. This doesn't look that interesting, right? But if we change the counts of division or segments, we can uh, start to see the power of this tool. If we change it to 68 or 44 or 88, whatever it is, right? The, the system will automatically generate tons of lines based on that. And also if we rotate this top curve a little bit, right? This is going to be so interesting. Okay, there are many ways. First way we can do it geometrically, which is rotate, right? This one will automatically rotate an object on a plan. Again, the plan is the X, Y plan by default. So, and the, that's the first thing, I will choose this object. And second is an angle, rotation angle in radians. Uh, so I think you learned that in middle school or something, the difference between degree and radius, right? So uh, radians. So now we want radians to be plugged in. And the degree, we can just set up like 40, 35, whatever degree. And this plan is automatically being world X, Y, which is X, Y plan. So we will rotate this and then, then we will plug this in. You can see that it start to be interesting. You see, once we rotate this circle in the, on the ear, we can start to change this, um, overall way of connection in between different points because for example, the first point on this curve is no longer somewhere here. It's rotated and it moved to this part, for example, right? So that is what we can do here. Uh, I can change the number greater. Let, let's say do 200, Let, let's do 500 and then I will see either you see this periodic change. Why is that? Because once it's changed over 360 degree, it reset everything, right? It goes back to the our original position because for degree um, rotation, the periodic number is 360. So this is very interesting to learn, right? So, and the next thing I want to talk about, the next way of doing this thing is we don't rotate this at all. We just leave it where it is. And then we only play with the number. So right here, uh, here is like a geometric approach to change this. But this, here, I would rather to give you an example of how to rotate this in a data perspective or in a, approach that focus on how to manipulate the data. So right here, let's jump in. This 
read this uh, first list of cur uh, points, and then also I will read the second. Let's see what's the difference in between. Well, okay. So you can see that, for example, the first point in the list is seventeen zero zero for this for this curve on the uh, for this point, and then the first uh, point on the second list, which is this sets of list, is seventeen zero fifty five. Okay, why there is a difference between the z coordinates x y z right? Z coordinates are different, of course, because it its height is different. And why the height height difference is um, fifty five? Okay, is because th this is the distance we moved it up. If we do thirty four, and we come over here and we see the thirty four, right? Same. The second point, which is uh, the index, is one. It's also the same for the x and y. Different for the z part, simply because we moved it. So that is the basic concept we are talking about here. And if if I want to make the move the second uh, data to the first position. So basically change the index from, from this one, one to zero and from two to one and zero will become the last one, which is uh, 58. What's gonna happen, right? We will see. So in order to do this, uh, to perform this kind of change, we'll come over to here and uh, there is a thing called sets and we will just do shift set. Actually, I will just type it. And once we shift this set, we will plug it in. And default, there's a one and the wrap. Okay, wrap, there's true. And what is wrap means? I will explain in a second, but let's uh, let's just do set booleans to false. So we are not gonna wrap it and let's see what's gonna happen. So if we are not gonna wrap it and let's put it number, let's say two. And then let's change it to one and plug it in. And then let's see this panel here. Let's delete this one. Okay, let's just compare this one and this one. This one is the original set and this one is the set that has already been shifted. Let's see what's the difference. The first data points disappear. So this second one become the first one. See the index one, or data one become data zero. Data zero is gone. And where it is, we move to the bottom. It just completely cut off, right? There are 58. Uh, the last one is index 58, but here is only index 55. Why? Because we didn't wrap it. But if we wrap it, it will become true and then it will pop up again. So wrapping the data means like we will not toss anything at the end of the day. If we, the list, uh, if the index is out of the range or it's just going to put it back, move it to the bottom. So if the index is out of the range, because index shouldn't be minus one, right? So if we wrap it, the data, they will just throw the data to the last one, which is index 58 here. And if we don't do that, again, if we set Boolean to false, they will just toss the data completely. So, okay, let's change it to true. And if we change this to the second one, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to move the data to units in this index sets. So you can see that the index 58 become index 56, right? So index 57 becomes index 55. So, so on and so forth. So we can use this to control the points position within the list. And uh, in that way, we can connect them together to generate this kind of rotating effects. So I will just use this one and connect with this base points here, right? This is the points from the original curve. And now if I rotate it, it will be like something like this. The reason that there are this, this layer here is because we draw it here. Okay, so I can just simply shift it, the data, as many digits as I want, let's say, right? And you see that every time it reach this number, this is just way too big, SD222. So this is zero and every time we move it back to like 
59. You go back to the original position again. Why is that? Because we divide this curve, uh, those, those two curves into 59 different segments. So this, the periodic number here is 59, okay? Okay, well, that is an example that I presented to you, uh, which I think will help you to have some basic understanding of list uh, of the interface of Grasshopper and how we think in the data and geometric uh, manner. Okay, so then I can bake this. I'll get a bunch of curve. And then also I can bake this and uh, this. So if I turn off Grasshopper, we'll get something like this, right? Uh, it's gonna take you a while to model this in right now, but if you know how to use Grasshopper, it literally takes like two minutes to do everything. And, you, and most importantly, you can change it in the way you want it with no time. So, perfect, let's delete this. And uh, if we want to make it a solid piece or like a real piece, we can just come over here and do a pipe. And the pipe, let's just, pipe is um, change the radius to 0 0.2. And uh, this is caps, like the ending part of the pipe, you want it to be flat or round or whatever. Let's just do round. Okay, and then let's connect the curves we generate here. So, okay, and then let's plug the curves that we moved here before. Okay, so if you plug multiple things into this same position, you have to hold uh, shift. Otherwise, it will just snap everything else. For example, if I'm not gonna uh, press shift and just drag it here, everything else will be like gone. So you have to um, hold shift and then bring it. So it will take multiple data inputs at the same time. Okay, shift, bang. Okay, perfect. And then I will just bake this and then I will, you can save this file. Okay, I will just save it. Um, for the first example, or first course. And uh, I will also include this um, file for your reference in the, uh, in, uh, and I'll also include this file uh, so you can read it by yourself and play with it in the, to the video, okay? So we'll save it and uh, click turn off it. And now you can render this, right? In the manner you want it to. And uh, all you can just change it to rendered mode and you can do so many things. I mean, this shape looks very, very basic, right? But it does have some architecture and industrial design potential, right? You can make it a cheer for the industrial designers, for architects, right? This can be columns. Or this can be a tall building if we uh, drag it like this, right? So again, some very basic implementation in Grasshopper can give us some very, very interesting end result. Okay, thank you so much. This will be our first course uh, for Grasshopper and um, please enjoy it.